my name is Emily Sandblade and I'm presenting the results of the survey. The participants in this survey were elected at random from the list of all registered voters in New Hampshire. Because federal law prohibits calling cell phones for surveys, each number was checked against the New Star database to verify that it was not a cell phone. The survey was conducted between May 10th and May 20th, and 833 people answered the survey during that time. The margin of error is plus or minus 3.4 percent. The press kit has a breakdown of the answers to each question. I will restrict my comments to some of the more notable trends that we discovered in this survey. The press, or for question one, do you support or oppose the right of a person to defend herself with a firearm in a dangerous situation? Overall, 88% answered that they support that right. Somewhat surprisingly, the Democrats in the survey supported such a right in 81% of the cases. Also worth noting is that there is, was no significant difference between how men and women answered this question. For question two, Vermont has never required a concealed carry license, and yet their crime rate is lower than New Hampshire's. Do you believe that Vermont's concealed carry policy promotes crime, discourages crime, or has no effect on the crime rate? 10% believe that such a policy promotes crime, 54% believe that it discourages crime, and 37% believed it has no effect on crime. Remarkably, over two-thirds of those who answered opposed in question one answered that Vermont's policy either discouraged crime or had no impact. Predictably, Republicans believe that Vermont's policy discouraged crime by 53% to the Democrats' 46% and undeclared voters' 54%. 45% of Democrats believe that the policy has no effect whereas only 31% of Republicans and 37% of undeclareds said that there was no effect. Just under 10% of all surveyed voters believe that Vermont's constitutional carry policy promoted crime. There was no significant difference between genders for answers to this question. For question three, the state law governing concealed carry permits was set up to bar union member Irish and Italian immigrants and their families from possessing a concealed firearm. The language that makes this kind of discrimination possible is still in place. Do you support or oppose the ability of local police to make decisions about issuing permits based on their judgment of suitability, even when such decisions can be based on political, union membership, gender, or racial bias? 71% of voters are opposed to local police issuances of permits based on their judgment of suitability. 65% of Democrats opposed issuing permits based on suitability, while 73% of Republicans and 73% of undeclareds opposed this basis for permits. Women were 4% more likely to oppose such a practice than men. There was another interesting datum related to question three that came out in the survey. 23% of voters support issuing permits based on suitability and also believe that Vermont's concealed carry policy either discourages crime or that it has no effect. This was an interesting case of cognitive dissonance, but it may explain why people responded to the permitting question in the public policy polling survey in the manner that they did. Some people may simply like the idea of requiring permits for as many things as possible whether they're effective or not. For question four, currently concealed carry permits can take 14 days to obtain. Should there be an exception for women who are victims of domestic violence to be able to protect themselves and their children outside their homes while waiting for a permit to be approved? Overall, 67% of those surveyed believe that there should be such an exception. 72% of Republicans thought that there should be an exception, while 63% of Democrats thought so, as did the same percentage of undeclared voters. Women were slightly more in favor of an exception than men. For question five, in New Hampshire, law-abiding residents apply for concealed carry permits, but in general, criminals go ahead and carry concealed without a permit. Do you believe that concealed carry permits are ineffective in preventing criminals from carrying a concealed weapon. 
Overall, 76% believe that requiring, conce or requiring concealed carry permits is ineffective in preventing a criminal from carrying a concealed weapon. 72% of Democrats believe that concealed carry permits are ineffective in preventing concealed carry by a criminal. They are in near agreement with the 76% of Republicans who think that permits are ineffective. Among the undeclared, 79% believe that permits are ineffective. Again, there was little difference in answers based on gender. For question six, most of the money that is financing the effort in New Hampshire to defeat the repeal of the concealed carry license comes from a few big contributors from outside the state. Do you agree or disagree that a few wealthy out-of-state people should be able to influence New Hampshire state law? Almost nobody approves out-of-state financing of the efforts against the repeal of the concealed carry law. Overall, 89% of the respondents disagreed. Only 15% of Democrats, 8% of Republicans, and 11% of undeclareds believe that large out-of-state donors should be able to influence the New Hampshire law. Again, gender differences are insignificant for this question. In general, these results give a much more detailed picture of how voters see the issue of concealed carry permits in New Hampshire. This quantitative information is available in the press kit and will be available on both the Women's Defense League website and on the Women's Independent Majority Polling Project website at wimpp.net. Thank you very much. And you might say, well, why did we undertake this poll specifically on Senate Bill 116? The reason that we decided to commission this poll lies in the fact that Governor Hassan has stated publicly that her opposition to Senate Bill 116 is based on the results and the findings of the public policy poll of last month. In that poll of 49 some odd questions, number 27, standing alone, was, do you believe that a person should have to have a license to carry a concealed weapon? There was no context, there was no history, it was simply a yes or no following a series of questions about political parties and candidates. We believe, again, that when New Hampshire citizens and voters understand history and understand the truth, they make the decisions. We believe that the Women's Defense League poll that we reported on today confirms that fact. Again, we call on Governor Hassan, and we call on Republicans and Democrats to say, we'll have the discussion on firearms any time. But to have a discussion on legally sanctioned discrimination that is protected in statute, that has to end. Senate Bill 116 must pass. Thank you, and we're happy to take any questions. Susan, do you think um, local law enforcement is guilty of ethnic or racial bias in denying permits in the region? Guilty is a pretty strong word, but we know uh, for a fact that on the basis of discussions and documents that we have received over the past three, four, five months, many people have been denied licenses, partly on gender, partly because they might be a political activist. But understand clearly that the pistol license law would gave authority to local law enforcement to decide whether you, you or I, are suitable. And last summer, when the uh, Supreme Court came out with the Doyen versus Hooksett case out of the Supreme Court, we had relied on suitable being defined on the pistol application as not prohibited by federal law. That ruling tossed out that definition, if you will, and left suitable solely and completely in the hands of law enforcement. There is no defense now, there is no definition in statute of what constitutes suitable, except for what a particular local law enforcement or board of selectmen might think on any given day. I think the way the, word, the question is worded, in other words, it doesn't point out how long this law has been in place and how long ago this discrimination occurred against Irish and the rest. You don't think the question in any way um, 
fails to give people a proper context that the level of discrimination that occurred back in the 30s and 40s well, we certainly might. isn't the level of discrimination that occurs now, is it? We don't know, Kevin, but that's a very good question. And for that reason, we dove into the history. And we found, um, following the, the Sullen Act being uh, passed in New York in 1911, a number of other states saw this, uh, gave them an opportunity to restrict who might have access to a concealed permit. And when you look at 1922 in particular, and we have um, some documents in the press kits uh, about the origins of 159.6 in particular, in February of 1922, 15 to 17,000 workers at the Amiskeg Mills in Manchester went on strike. They went on strike for a number of reasons. Following the end of World War I, the, the need for the Amiskeg products was diminishing, the economy was in a slump, um, cotton was being uh, turned into cloth where it's grown because of real electricity and no need to buy water power anymore. So the Amiskeg Mills increased workers' hours from 48 to 54 and cut their pay by 20%. The United Textile Workers, who had come in to try and help um, not defend but support the rights of these workers, during that nine-month strike, after that strike ended sometime in November of 1922, in January of 1923, House Bill 26 was introduced into the General Court that brought into life New Hampshire's pistol law. And in the papers, in the archives, it talks about uh, foreign-born and unnaturalized citizens. We connected the dots, but I don't think it's a very long line. Given how strong the governor's statements were, are you really hopeful you're going to be able to change your mind based on the results of one poll? It isn't so much changing her mind, Kevin. Um, I honestly believe that she's unaware of this because the governor is, is a staunch supporter um, of, of, of workers. She's a supporter of women. She's a supporter of, of minorities and the rights of, 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 of everyone in New Hampshire. I think if she understands that this is the basis, it's, it may be draped in, in the nice white clothing of public safety. But at its heart, at its core, at its origin, it's nothing more than state-sanctioned uh, discrimination, period. I don't think she stands for that. I hope she doesn't stand for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, press packets, if you don't have one, are available. And uh, thank everyone for coming today.